This is Twit. Rob is going to kick us off. And Rob, you have it on very good authority that somebody listened to us. Well, maybe. Yeah, so last week, Jonathan shared his great idea with the world right here on the Untitled Linux show. (laughs) His idea for the framework laptop to develop a, a laptop where the SOC can be swapped out from ARM to RISC-V, or whatever else uh, comes that follows that form factor. Well, here is the evidence that people are listening to us, and they (laughs) responded fast. Based on this story, they heard Jonathan's idea and were like, whoa, that is an awesome idea. Why didn't we think of that? So, I'm not 100% sure if this is the exact form factor Jonathan was talking about, because I'm not quite familiar with the form factor he's talking about so i'll let him chime in at the end but here is what is happening last week i also talked about deep computing releasing an ubuntu risk 5 laptop this week it has been announced that deep computing is working with framework computer inc on uh, a risk 5 mainboard and for those out of the loop framework makes the famously modular framework laptop that allows you to easily swap out components so you can keep using that thing virtually forever. So of course, this new RISC-V board will drop right into any framework laptop 13 chassis uh, following the framework's modular ethos. The board will be based around the Star 5 JH7110 which uses the RV64GC instruction set architecture with a 64-bit quad-core U74 processor running at up to 1.5 gigahertz, plus an integrated GPU running up to 600 megahertz. This is the same SOC used in the Pine64 PineTab 5 tablet and in in the Star64 single board computer. As noted last week, RISC-V is still going to be rather low performance with the, with the main intention of this is just to get RISC-V in the hands of developers so to get so they can get started developing. So so once this hardware is really ready for us, the apps will be there. And and with this framework owners will be able to just drop this into their system or or maybe purchase a used framework to drop it into. So I have two questions here for Jonathan. One, what do you think of this now? And two, since people listen to your ideas, what big idea should they announce next week? (laughs) Uh, So Rob is, of course, telling this story very, very tongue in cheek. First off, this is on the heels of last week closely enough that obviously we didn't have anything to do with it as much as we would love to <laughs> love to think that we did uh and second it's not actually quite the idea that i was pitching um but that's okay we we still we're excited to see it um the thing that's interesting about this is the the processor that they picked it is the same processor that's in the uh the vision 5 2 i believe is the name of the board it's an odd name but i think that's the name of it yeah. and so i'm familiar with this i've got one of those it's on the desk behind me or no it's right here in front of me actually <laughs> yeah the star 5 it's this guy i've got one i had a i've had one for a long time and uh, yeah so right here on it you can see it's the jh7110 it's it's i believe the exact same chip and uh how shall i put this um, it's sort of like using a Raspberry Pi somewhere around a Raspberry Pi 4 as your main desktop. Like, it's possible, but you're not going to have the greatest time with it as opposed to a, a really powerful desktop machine. Um, but what it is, is it is powerful enough, and kind of like what Rob said, I don't think he's got the idea, it's powerful enough to start compiling and start testing on. Like, it's it's a good bootstrap machine. And so, you know, as we look forward into this maybe risk risk five future, uh, things like this is a, a great stepping stone to get there. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think you'll be able to plug that uh, Vision Five into it as it is. But uh, <laughs> no, no. So it's what they be a form factor? What they've done is they've taken like the fr- so framework has this established form factor of what their motherboards look like, and the idea is that going forwards, you can take 
their, their motherboards will be replaceable. So you buy the whole laptop once, and in five years, three years, however long you want to wait down the line, they release the next motherboard. It's got the integrated chip on it. You can just pop one motherboard out and the other one back in and do an upgrade that way without having to buy a whole new laptop. Like It's a, it's a neat idea. It's caught on. Um, and so this is something really interesting where they're offering the the new architecture and so you could see a future where there's going to be arm 64 chips or motherboards it's, it's full motherboards you know it's just the chip but with them doing this i i very much see a future where there's going to be arm 64 motherboards going into the framework uh and then hopefully eventually a, you know a more powerful risk 5 chip that'll be a, a little more useful for daily computing when they've got enough developers screaming for it yeah because they'll probably be screaming after getting this one well i think I, I would hope that most people that get it know what they're going to get. Um, like, obviously, you're not going to run Windows on this thing. Uh, you're not... It's not going to be a high... You're not going to be gaming on it, really. Like, some, there's some you can do, but you're not going to be doing high-performance gaming. You're not going to be installing Steam on it. That's just totally a no-go. Um, Pong. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little <laughs> more than just Pong. So, like... Um, yeah, but we got to have the high frames per second. Yeah, you can emulate <laughs> on it. Like you could emulate probably up to like the PlayStation slash N sixty four era, no problem. Um, going past that could be. You, you Atari uh, eight hundred. Oh yes, definitely, definitely all the all the frame rates for that. Um, but yeah, it's it's it, in my opinion, it's just going to be great for like bootstrapping the Risk platform. I think that's what it's going to be really important for. But you're definitely not going to be able to run KD on top of Wayland on it. Uh, you probably could. Yeah, you probably He's pretty lightweight anymore. Yeah. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there. <laughs>